So when I wrote this book, uh, The Little Book of Ikigai, um, I, you know, at the beginning I put this, the five pillar of Ikigai, right? Five pillar of Ikigai. So, you know, this uh, I think has grown uh, since I written this book. Um, the pillar, five pillars of Ikigai, uh, pillar one, starting small, pillar two, releasing yourself, pillar three, harmony and sustainability. Pillar four, the joy of little things, and pillar five, uh, being in the here and now. So these are the five pillars. Now, do you know how I came up with this idea of the five pillars of Ikigai? Uh, this is something um, interesting, and I think some, this is something that I'd better clarify here. Uh, so when I started, started writing this book, um, you know, there was no definite theory of what is Ikigai. You know, I mean, because as I wrote the, in this book, Ikigai is something so natural to a Japanese person like me. It's something like the air we breathe. So there, because it's not nothing special, Ikigai, the purpose for, you know, living. Um, it's everywhere, but it's so ambiguous because you, nobody has really uh, thought about it deeply uh, because Japanese people practice Ikigai uh, as something natural but at the same time uh, they do not have a developed idea for what uh, that means and so when I wrote this book I you know referred to many wonderful individuals and anecdotes and cultures and ways of living that I find in Japan and I try to make an organic home out of these examples so I was writing these things but surprisingly the five pillars of Ikigai was nowhere <laughs> to, like, to, throughout the writing process I didn't structure the book uh, around these five uh, pillars you know but I did uh, delve deeply into uh, the roots of Japanese culture and I really do, did some uh, soul searching as a Japanese person to, uh, uh, to you know, investigate what are uh, actually the important factors of uh, life for us Japanese. So I did that soul searching process. And then uh, near the very end of my writing process. You know, uh, I was running in Tokyo. I always go for a run in Tokyo. And I was thinking about this book and I was thinking, hey, um, you know, this, I, I think this is a great book. Um, but you know, um, probably I need something more. Because you know, what would be the take home message that will kind of summarize the message of this book? Oh, I, I'm not someone who believes in simplified messages. I, I don't believe in dumbing down. You know, I, I don't think complicated things can be said in simple ways. Well, you can say it in simple ways, but, you know, oversimplification is always a, uh, you know, bad thing. That's my belief. So I never thought, I never wrote this book, uh, you know, based on the assumption that uh, you can, you know, draw a simple diagram of Ikigai or whatever. But at, towards the end, as I, as I was saying, I was, as I was jogging in Tokyo, I started to think, wait, uh, maybe we need some summary of the whole message of the book, because otherwise people wouldn't be able to, you know, communicate effectively about this book, you know. So, I, and, you know, near the very end, just before I sent the manuscript to my agent in Tokyo, who was then supposed to send the manuscript to the editor in London, you know, just before that, I came up with this idea of five pillars of Ikigai. So I looked over the whole manuscript again and came up with these five concepts. Uh, five pillars of Ikigai. That's how I came up with this idea of uh, five pillars, you know. So until at the very end, until at the very end, 
Uh, I was not conscious of these things. So these uh, five pillars are actually something that I crystallized out of the whole argument of this book. And as I said, uh, I think it has aged rather well. Uh, now I do feel that uh, these five pillars are indeed important. Um, if you are familiar with factor analysis, uh, I, I would say that these are, statistically speaking, um, based on natural language, uh, the five major factors of uh, what constitutes ikigai. So, you know, so that was a really interesting and perhaps creative process. Um, you know, what is funny is that, you know, um, you know, as is often the case with me, um, when I come up with a concept, I am not aware of the origin. Five pillars, you know, um, this is actually a word that I didn't uh, think uh, was, uh, you know, <laughs> Ubiquitous. Uh, you know, there was something in me which uh, thought that, oh, five pillars, this is important. But I didn't actually consciously research into what five pillars would mean uh, at that time. So I finished writing the book, and five pillars of Ikigai was there. And uh, then I, I went to Dubai for this conference, wonderful conference organized by the Dubai government. Uh, uh, World Congress on Happiness, and I was invited, and I went there, and I gave a talk on Ikigai. And before that, since Dubai uh, is in the Islamic cultural region, I did some research, and I discovered for the first time, you know, after finishing the book, and just before I was going to this conference, that actually there is this very important uh, concept of um, Five pillars of Islam. Uh, so I, 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 so there was a resonance between five pillars of Ikigai and five pillars of Islam. So that's oh, that's when I realized that wait, uh, this five pillars metaphor is very important throughout the history of the world culture. And you know, I, I, I was not aware of the fact until you know long after I have finished the, writing this book and long after it was published and just before this conference in Dubai, this very important conference in Dubai. So that's the kind of person I am. I always, you know, uh, move around unconsciously and intuitively. But anyway, so for me, uh, the five pillars of Ikigai uh, came as kind of a miraculously, uh, you know, emerging, uh, you know, crystal from out of my unconsciousness and, um, you know, out of the whole organic structure of this book, the little book of Ikigai. So I'm, now I am rather proud of the fact that I have finished this book and wrote an introduction involving these five pillars concept. And I do hope that this, these five pillars reasonably represent what Ikigai is all about for a Japanese person and nowadays for all the people in the world. So that's my story. That's my clarification about how the five pillars of Ikigai was conceived and were fixed in this book.